Welcome back to Advancing Aid, and this is one of our Gremlin Box tutorials. Let's get right into it. A little housekeeping item if you hear the kids. No, you don't. We ignore it now. This is one of our double hole, dual hole, whatever you want to call it, snow globe blanks. They're coated for sublimation. Yes, this is my own design. I'm going to tape this one up for you, but you also have the option if you buy the Gremlin Box that I'll press the blank for you anyway, but here I'll give you all my tips. This particular design, I make sure that there's enough of a design that you can have a tiny gap, but the design still looks seamless. You're going to tape all the way down. Yeah, I know I'm out of frame. I just don't refilm anymore because I don't have time. Here's my tip for sublimation. It's kind of the most basic tip ever. If you have a part of your design that is dark or you want to make sure you press it, make sure it's not on the lip. You want to make sure your design and your tape don't go over or onto the lip. You want to come right up against it, but not over it because that kind of creates an air gap and your paper isn't going to lay flat. You want to make sure you can press all the way around with nice contact. Another thing when you're pressing snow globe blanks, you don't want to press super hard. I can close mine without a full hand. You want to make sure that you're very careful. Too much pressure and you may break the chamber because it gets too hot. I press mine at 350 degrees. I'm going to press for two minutes. No, a minute. Look, guys, I'm a busy corporate mom. I am not going to refilm. I make mistakes. It's the way it is. Every 30 seconds, you'll rotate it just like you see me do it. And then when you take it out, do as I say, not as I do. You want to make sure that you are um, rotating it all the way around. Sometimes I do 30 seconds. Sometimes I do 15. I just go with my feeling. And then wait until it cools to peel it. Again, do as I say, not as I do. And yes, because I'm an absolute psycho, for no reason I dumped all this on my table just for the footage. We're going to mix glitter. I know that you guys are going to be like, what are you doing that's bright orange? That's pastel. Becca, that doesn't look good. Now you're going to add neon. What are you doing, girl? Oh, wait. Opal fixes everything, right? Right? Let's watch it mix. This is my favorite part. I know I don't need to add this, but when you get the Gremlin box, you do get five glitters. And for this tutorial, I wanted to mix them all for you. So I wanted to show you. I love mixing glitter. Plus, I really wanted to do a voiceover where you guys could hear what I'm actually thinking. And yes, I thought this was going to fail, but look how cute. You're not going to believe how this one turned out. Yeah, neons and opal, it's going to be hideous, right? Ha, huh, joke's on you. No, this one turned out so damn cute and I hate pink. Just wait. Yeah, that's macaroni and cheese dust. No, it's glitter. Um, two neons, opal, gold, holographic. How is this going to turn out? Becca, what are you doing? I know that this is what you guys think when I mix glitter live, but hey, I also have this running thought process, but it turned out so pretty. Like, look at that. Just look at it. There's a reason I'm the queen of glitter. And now we're going to do blues. And Becca, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? There's no way this is going to turn out, right? No just kidding. And you're like, but Becca, I saw the design you pressed on this cup. These are not going to look good with this cup. Just trust me. Like, honestly, I questioned myself too, but I knew that I needed to trust the process and what mix would be complete without an opal. Like, I mean, come on. And I know I don't mix opals. I keep saying that. I know why. I know we've talked about it, but like, look at how pretty this is. It just tied it all together. I love how this one turned out. There's so much dimension in an opal glitter. Mm my best mix yet. A little from from with a vacuum. Megan got it for me from Amazon. You guys should get one too. Okay, see, look at them all together. Did you trust me? That's the orange one. And look at that gold. It's so pretty. That pink, all of these have neons in them, minus the opal, of course. And look at it. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Okay, okay, we're back with the tutorial. Okay, I had to mix the glitter and then show it to you guys because I had to let it cool because I'm notorious for burning my fingers, like notorious for it. There's not really a trick to peeling it. I could trim it down, but also I love the reveal and um, I kind of wanted to show you that I struggle taking it off too. Side note though, if you press it and you have a little bit of tape or paper residue, just use some warm water and it'll come right off. And look at how just look at it. Look at this press. It's so cute. I love this design. Yes, I made it myself. Okay, here's a side-by-side. -side. Mine is the dual hole. What's on the market is the individual. You can see the difference in the hole sizing, and it's going to matter. Look at all these. Here's the blank. Look at that press. This is where I'm going to differ from everybody else. I use clear school glue, and I put it in this smaller bottle. It's about mm, probably a quarter of the way full. It's really hard to tip it because you can't see. And then I have another one that is just warm water. 
I am going to fill this with white. I use this paint. You can use any kind of paint. I am also going to add my snowbank mica. Like, look at how pretty this is. And yes, in the gremlin box, you do get a mica as well. So I'm going to add it directly in with just the glue. There's only glue in here right now, guys. You can use any paint. You can use alcohol ink. And I say you can, and my eyes are rolling. Hopefully you can tell. Uh, but it uses so much, and I don't get the look that I really want. I like to have that opaque look, and the mica just adds a natural shimmer in with the paint. And so we're going to add it right in. And then from there, we're going to add warm water. I'm only going to fill it about halfway full. Yes, this is going to make your mixture a little bit thick because you're about 50% glue, 50% water. I'm shaking up just the paint and the mica right now. Um, side note, be careful because I spray things all the time. Just look at the table under there. And when I took my finger off, I definitely sprayed myself in the forehead with this white paint mixture. So be careful. So from here, I have about a mm, quarter of an ounce of glitter in each of these colors, and I'm adding about half of it into this bottle. Now, of course, I make a mess. Like, this might be YouTube, and I could edit it out, but also I'm a real person, and I show you guys all of the mess. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm lazy, okay? Um, it's not even lazy. It's just this is reality. So I always put a paper towel underneath and then just dump it into the bottle. I'm adding in that gold and the orange. It's not even orange, like pink and then the blue. So I've added about half of all of the glitter in. And uh, see, I forgot to put the water in and you have to add more water. And that's going to help me mix it in. Also, I don't know why people don't, like more people don't do this. It's not a secret. I'm pretty sure I learned it somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I just did it. I can't remember. But like, why would you put dry glitter in your snow globe when you could just add it to the fluid? And here we go. We get to see my uh, blank in action. Now I add a little bit of just warm water to the bottom. See, I spilled again. It's just what I do. Uh, please tell me I put a paper towel under here before we start filling it. I can't remember. We're going to learn together alongside each other. We're shaking it up. Becca, put a paper towel under. What am I doing? I could edit this out. I'm just not going to. I don't. Wow, I'm going to live on the edge. Look at how easy this is flowing in. The reason I have the two holes in here is that extra airflow really does make a difference. Now, I do remember when I filled this, that's actually most of the fluid that was in that small bottle. And it filled about halfway up. And you can see I'm kind of shaking it, trying to get the glitter all mixed in. And what I'm going to do next is add more mica, more or the rest of the glitter, and more water. And yes, on TikTok, people are like, the two holes don't really make that much of a difference. But I really tried not to edit this footage down. I tried to cut as many scenes, like as little scenes as possible. That didn't make any sense. I tried to do as few cuts as possible so that you guys could really see it in real time. When I'm not filming, it takes me about five minutes start to finish, um, minus the 60 seconds of, of um curing time with UV resin and like can we just please make some noise for the glitter mix I know you guys thought I was insane but look at how cute it all looks like together we added more of the mica now I'm adding more warm water and yes the warm water really does help it kind of thins the glue out when you're adding it in without keeping your mixture too like um fast so now I'm going to shake it up more I'm sure yes look there we go um, I love what it looks like inside the white. I still get that color that I'm looking for. It's so cute. And of course, uh, I made a mess. I'm pretty sure I got glitter in my hair again. And see, now we're going to add the rest of it in. And look at how quick this fills. Like, that's not, no footage is cut here. Like, it's so easy, you guys. And now I slowed it down just a little because it's getting fuller. So you want to let more of that air come out. And now look at how full I get this. This is completely flat on the table. I'm getting a little bit of a bubble. So I just popped it. And look at that. It's full all the way to the top. And again, I didn't cut the footage. So now I'm just cleaning it off. I cannot emphasize enough how many times I wipe this thing off. Wipe it more than you need to. And now I'm going to plug both of them and kind of rock it back and forth to see um, if I have any really big air pockets. I'm going to wipe it off again because I clean it all the time because I make a giant mess. Listen close. This is the only secret I'm going to tell you. I love these syringes. 91% isopropyl, another little bottle that has alcohol in it, and we're going to get right into it. It does not matter how many bubbles you have in there. You do not need to degas it because watch this magic shit. So now, because I added so much glue at the very beginning, I have enough in my mixture that I can add the alcohol and it's not going to thin my mixture too much because you do have to think about your ratio. 
There's no magic number. Go with your heart, whatever you feel like. So now I've added the alcohol and I'm cleaning it off. I cannot, like, I clean so much, plug both holes and then I'm going to rotate it around and watch. And yes, I can plug it and not spill. Where'd all the bubbles go? It's like magic. Look at that. I only have that one air pocket. Here's another one of my tricks. It's like silicone um, Gorilla Glue tape. I got it for like $8 on Amazon and it's a giant roll. Also, maybe don't do what I do and buy the six inch one because I didn't pay attention. I'm going to cut a strip. You see that strip laying there? It's going to matter in a while. I'm not going to tell you what I did wrong because you have to watch the whole thing. But see, I'm going to measure it out. I'm going to cut a little one. I may mean, just pick one side. doesn't really matter. None of them matter. Just pick one side and then you're going to just stick it on there. You really can't do it wrong. I used to use glue dots. I do like the glue dots still for my acrylic blanks, but on these glass ones, I really do like this uh, Gorilla Glue watertight tape. It just seems to do it a little bit better for me. It's a little bit more sturdy and it sticks to the glass really well versus the acrylic. So you're just going to put your finger on there and just smush it down, like push on it as hard as you can. I don't have any cool analogy, just like really put your muscle behind it. Like you saw my whole shoulder come into frame, like put your weight behind it. You want to press as hard as you can. You're not going to break the blank. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is plug just the one side because it's easier. I'm going to check the glitter flow and make sure that it's moving kind of how I like, because this is when I would dump out some of my mixture and add in either more glue or more water, depending on what I'm looking at. Um, but you can see it's starting to fall out or down or whatever you want to call it. So uh, I don't know what I was doing when I filmed this part of the footage, but I was clearly thinking about it. I don't know if I was feeling it or maybe seeing if there was air pockets at the top. I don't know, but I'm trying not to cut out all the footage. And this voiceover is probably going to sound like I'm a lunatic, but it's okay. And look at how pretty the glitter looks inside that. You can still see the color. Now we have more air pockets, but that's okay. Air bubbles, air pockets, whatever. And now you're going to tilt it just a little bit and you're going to add in more of that 91% alcohol. You can do water if you want, but I like to do um, alcohol at this point because I'll pop any bubbles because I shake the crap out of my snow globes. And I'm lazy and I don't want to let the bubbles pop on their own, so I add in my alcohol. Now look at that. There is like no air pocket except for you can see like it kind of looks like a smile actually look at that it is a smile i'm such an idiot look you guys i'm filming this voiceover at nine o'clock at night i haven't had dinner it's a tuesday i'm tired i cannot get this uh syringe to pop that air pocket for the life of me i did cut this footage because i tried for like 15 minutes to get this and that's probably an exaggeration i'd have to go back and look it was probably only like five minutes it felt like 15 though you guys and you can see it i'm trying to get it to hold right next to that other hole and i can't get it so i'm like okay i give up i'm going to put a uh another piece of tape on the other side because I noticed it liked to stick to the other side of the hole. Now, if you look under when I move my hand, come on, Becca, move your hand. You guys know how to put a piece of tape on. There you go. You can see it. Um, I'm going to peel this piece off, and you can see that the air pocket is sitting right next to that hole. All the, that time I was trying to get it, if I had just paid attention to where it wanted to sit, and because I blocked my hand like an idiot, uh, I didn't check my footage, I use the syringe and look, there's no extra air hole, like none whatsoever. So now I'm going to put uh, my final piece of tape on. Like, look at that. I'm just so proud of it. There's no bubbles. There's only a tiny air pocket, which I do like a little one. Clean it again. It needs to be clean. No oils from your hands. No alcohol, no glue, no glitter, nothing. You want it to be as clean as possible. I use the super cheap paper towels from Sam's because they never leave behind lint. Okay, this is where I went wrong, you guys. I questioned the size of it in my head when I cut it, um, <clears throat> but I did not listen to myself because what was that, everybody? I was in a hurry. I know that you guys know this. You always make mistakes when you're rushing. Like, why is it when you're trying to rush the final step? I'm like, awesome, I've done great. So you can't see it really except for that little shiny part on that right side. Um, the piece of tape wasn't big enough, and I'll show you why in a second. But important, check your flow before you put UV resin on. See, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong, right? So here's where I do my UV. 
I do two layers of UV. I go around each one of my little glue dots and then I'm going to fill in in the middle and go lightly over each piece of tape. You only need a little bit, like the tiniest amount, like a fairy fart. I don't know, like the smallest amount, you guys, over the tape itself because we're going to do a second layer. This is really to seal in the edges. Now, I started questioning myself. I kind of saw it. I was like, no, I don't see it. And then I brought out my heat gun uh, to kind of thin it out. It helps with the second coat. It kind of pops any extra bubbles. And right by the heat gun, if you look real close, you can see where uh, the tape started to leak. And I'm just going to keep watching because I know it's right there. And there you go. You see the white starting to leak? It's so obvious. I was so pissed. I was like, Becca, seeing that leach out on this footage pisses me off. Could I have cut this out and not shown you guys? Absolutely I could have. Should I? Maybe. Uh, but I want to show you how to fix it. I cleaned it off with more of those paper towels. Then I wiped it down with alcohol. And see, look at that. It's just marginally too small. I cut another strip. Always, always, always do a little more than a little less. That's my best piece of advice for you guys. So now you're going to watch me put tape on for like the fifth time on this tumbler. And again, what did I say, ladies and gentlemen? Push real, real hard. Real hard. Always cut it a little bit larger. Err on the side of caution. Um, it, I, don't, I don't know what else to tell you guys. I make mistakes all the time. I'm not some perfect YouTuber and, with perfect footage. Could I cut it out? Probably. Look, guys, again, it's now 9.15 at night. I haven't had dinner. I want to post this for you guys. And I wanted you guys to see the real mess. And if you guys know anything about me, you know I'm transparent as can be. So now we're going to wipe it down again. I really need water. This voiceover is such a hot mess, you guys. I'm going to continue to do them just like this. It's just the reality. I'm going to check this because now I'm paranoid like four or five more times. I did, I did take that footage out. Um, and now we are going to add more UV resin, just like I did before. And you're going to watch me do it again. See, it's important to watch. I do it the same way pretty much all the time, but we'll watch it again. This is a slightly better angle. My hand's a little bit out of the way. Never mind, Becca, you spoke too soon. Now I'm right in the way. So I'm going around both of those tape pieces. Um, no, I'm not going to tell you what this resin is because I'm testing my own resin and we're hoping to release our own resin here in just a couple weeks. So um yeah it's ours you just can't get it yet so here i filled it in and because i was in a hurry because by the time i was filming this it was like 6 30 or 6 40 and the kids were at the store and i needed to hurry so i made this a little bit bigger on that first layer and here we go look at how nice that looks no leaking under those holes it looks beautiful grabbing the heat gun to just smooth out those edges make sure there's no air pockets I prefer a heat gun to a torch because one, I can get a little bit of movement, which helps with covering of any holes or not holes, but like missing parts. And it seems to give me a nice um, tapered edge. Now I'm going to come in with a popsicle stick and just make sure there were a couple of spots that I had noticed the resin hadn't fully covered. And I always press down on the edges. Even though I don't need to, I press them down just on the off chance that they're sticking up from the resin a little bit because it is a little bit of a thicker tape. And then it's going to go under my nail lamp for 60 seconds. And then I'm going to check to make sure. And you can see me feeling it. I can feel a little piece of that tape right there. So I'm going to grab some sandpaper. I don't care what grit I use. Um, I really, really, really don't. Um, and I'm just going to sand it lightly Make sure you don't get the glass. You just want to get the UV, and I'm just sanding down that like tape edge that's sticking up. And this helps to make sure that it's constantly level because I'll get any, any part that might be a little bit off. So I'm checking it. Why am I using my middle finger, you guys? Gosh, in case you were wondering, this is exactly what it's like when I craft. This is my internal monologue. Now I'm going to wipe it off with alcohol. And I am going to let it dry, and then I realized that there was glue, um, glue and water mixture, and so I wiped the whole cup down because I could feel it. And then I'm just checking the bottom to see if it's unlevel on any side, and I'm wiping it again because I'm paranoid at this point. So now I'm going to add the UV resin, and I'm going to fill one side, and then I'm going to fill the other. 
I don't really have a method to this madness. I wish I could tell you that there was a trick or a tip, but one, I kind of just go with feeling. I've probably made 200 snow globes um, at this point, and that's not an exaggeration. I just know, I, I don't have an ex any tips. I just know that for me and what works for me may not work for you. Um, having this like middle edge and then doing, um, having a middle and then the two edges helps me on this final layer to always get it level on the first try. So I'm going to always have a little bit more on those edges and you can see I'm looking to see where there's no UV resin and then I'm going to add literally the smallest amount over where I sanded. Like you can see on this footage how much space there is uh, that UV resin needs to cover because that's just such a thicker area because of the tape. You don't need to add more. And so I only do a tiny bit. I use my popsicle stick because popsicle sticks are life and I'm cheap. And then I'm going to grab my heat gun and make sure that I pop any of the bubbles that I created because I used my popsicle stick. And then I'm going to just make sure everything is smooth and level. This heat gun I got from Michaels because I broke my other one. I don't like it as much as the one I got from Amazon, just FYI. So now I'm going to clean. You can kind of see it on that left side. There I get it with the paper towel. It was just starting to run a little bit. This is my super professional um, UV station. And now I'm just going to check it. That's literally how easy it is, you guys. Look at how cute this turned out. This is my burnout breakdown cup. You can get the finished one or the gremlin box on my website. The link is in the show notes. This is not the podcast, Beck. It's not the show notes. Look at how cute this is. I have, I have been struggling with burnout. If you follow me on TikTok or on any of the social medias, then you know that I'm really struggling with burnout right now. And I actually made this design for myself. And I did keep this cup and I plan to take it to work. And it has some really fun quotes. Some of them are ones my therapist told me. Some of them are ones that my coworker told me. And Becca, why, why, why can't you just be normal? You had to pick that off in the middle of this footage. I'm going to leave you with the favorite one. Burnout is what happens when you try to avoid being human for too long. Remember to take breaks. Remember you are human. Thanks for hanging out with our Gremlin Box tutorial. I hope I catch you guys next month. Enjoy. Bye, guys.